So if you have any questions later on, you can ask him too. But I'm going to uh, highlight um, two uh, elements uh, from the motivation of the Department of Work and Social Economy, um, zooming in on the trends report they did in 2018. And it was a sector study on circular economy, uh, looking in at the impact of circular economy in on social economy and the employment of target groups. And quickly uh, focusing on two uh, points is the, um, the idea that um, the social economy companies themselves really need to innovate and respond to strategic trends. I'm not sure what happened because the presentation kind of flips. Okay. Um, so, social economy companies, it is important that they innovate and and um, and go and look to for the new uh, strategic strategic trends. But it's also being pointed out that it's quite a challenge. Um, there's also a challenge for them to um, to really get into the action of the new economy and participate in designing the local strategy towards a more circular economy, merely then just do what uh, what people ask you to do and be a part of the cooperation, but really change that point of view and go into the, the, the design of new, um, new business. That's for the department. Now, uh, Circular Flanders, as uh, Elmer said, we um, we are actually a hub ourselves um, and we want to enhance the circular economy in Flanders. And for us, uh, well, we the, all the work we do, we the key word here is cooperation, because in the circular economy, you cannot do a project on your own. Um, and we we used to see like you have the government can't do it alone, but then you have business and then you have the civilian. But we try to look at it in a broader way and also give a research and a knowledge institution a place in the finance world with the new business models. And we call it now the societal pentagon. Um, and uh, for us, um, the public steering committee of Circular Flanders, who overview, overviews the, the work we do, they are really represented. The, 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 the five parties are represented in the public private steering committee. And we're overviewed by two ministers in cooperation, and that's the Minister of Work and the Ministry of the Environment. And nowadays we're working with uh, strategic uh, circular agendas put in place for specific topics like circular building or the chemistry and the plastics and the food chain. But we also have an uh, we we want to work uh, with uh, what we call levers. And till this day, I'm not very used to giving presentations in English, and I really had to look it up again. Uh, how do you say hevbom in English? And using Google Translate, it should be levers, um, in which we say if you if you work on those topics, then you can put something in movement. And um, we we defined seven of them. Uh, taking away barriers on policies, instruments and, and financing, but also on jobs and skills in the circular economy. So it's a topic that uh, we really want to uh, work on too. And then as the third party, I have the European Social Fund um, and they are targeted, they, they, um, they can, uh, they supervise the European funding that is coming to Flanders, but it's targeted on uh, initiatives to strengthen labor market and increase employment. And now what we did, we joined forces and actually we, we put in our money together. Um, the subsidy monies we have from Circular Flanders and the European Social Fund, uh, we, we went for co-financing. And then we, we worked the whole idea out. And um, well, the thing is like, when you think about it, how to stimulate cooperation between two parties, we chose the most practical way, and that is supporting the hubs in Flanders. Um, and uh, the idea behind that was that we wanted to have it locally, 
because uh, you want to, the the local challenge and the, the the regional challenge to be to be tackled or, or really present in in the in uh, the support. And uh, we said we want three perspectives in the DNA of the hub in the real partnership, and that is then the local uh, actor, a social economy company and a regular uh, company with the good mindsets on circular economy. And well, the whole idea was like we have now subsidy money and we to to um, establish the corporation. We want to create actually space and it ha it didn't have to be a, a physical space, although some projects really go for a physical space, but it had to be at least mental space time in heads to really um, go uh, and, and talk to each other and tackling problems and really go into the action. So the modalities of the subsidy program, um, I've put here some timing and the idea that we worked in two phases, um, which was new for us circular Flanders, but it's it's been really a, a good move, I think. Um, and we launched it, the subsidy, in 1st of September, giving two months time for people to uh, present a project idea. And phase one, um, if you were entered in phase, if you were allowed to in phase one, we would give you subsidies, subsidized time to make your project plan and put your partnership in place. And then you had to reapply for phase two. And we're now there uh, in May till the end of next year, there will be a subsidy for really an operational hub. And um, we had 37 applic applicants for phase one who presented the idea, and then we had a budget for 20 hubs to go in phase one and have the time to make their idea. And then we, uh, from those 20, there were 16 who said, okay, we're ready to go for phase two, but then we could uh, select only 12. But we're very pleased for, uh, and we have very uh, strong dossiers. Now, the funding, uh, I want to give you some insight. Um, and um, well, I, I wanted to share like the, how, how, did, how do things like this work? Uh, last year, we kind of said, OK, how many how much money do we have available? And for Flan Circular Flanders, it was that amount. And then we, that meant for ESF that amount. And we just thought, OK, how many hubs can we fund with this budget? And then we kind of thought, OK, 10, 12 hubs should be possible. And we think um, that with the budget that we have, we thought that with the budget that we had, we could uh, make a difference. And uh, a lot of parties said, OK, for this kind of budget, we can really go into the action. Now, specif specifying for phase one, and for phase two, there's always uh, own financing, which was uh, required. So 40% 40, 40 came from ESF, 40 for Circular Flanders, and 20% own financing, which meant a subsidy for phase one for the four months, 12,000 euros. And now for phase two, we put uh, available 128,000 euro for each hub. And then the requirements, it was really uh, specified that we want uh, the three parties in the partnership um, and the four objectives for each hub are kind of in globo but what we saw now that well they all kind of translated it to their local situation which was kind of the idea but uh, what it's all about it's about organizing networking and matchmaking between actors really help realize concrete new circular initiatives with social impact helping uh, social economy companies in um, creating new assignments. And uh, then uh, the fourth one is um, we thought it was now the idea like creating awareness among citizens and companies, actually creating a vibe locally, um, showing that there is something going on between circular and social economy. So we put that as an objective too. Now, the results. Um, as I said, 12 hubs, and it's uh, a kind of simplistic uh, picture of Flanders, but it gives you an idea that there's a nice spread of, uh, of the hubs. The red ones are really uh, 
oozed from cities, uh, and the orange one are more more regional focus, more broader focus, and then we have the blue one, which is a bit special, uh, and it focuses on repair and share activities. Um, but uh, yeah, I think it's it's a nice result if you look at the map of Flanders here. And then finally, I wanted to point out that we also are very fortunate that we could put a learning network in place because we're on a journey together. And um, so it is very valuable, I think, to create a community of the hub partners we have uh, learning from each other. But it's also be it's going to be they're going to be able to get some individual coaching. And it is with the support of the King Baudouin Foundation, which is um, which is very, very nice to see that cooperation too. It's a topic that is important for them too, uh, circular and social economy, and they have funded the learning network. And it will be Möbius, um, who we all know then as an organizer of this webinar, who will be um, supporting the learning network. And finally, our... Uh, contact uh, information uh, of my colleagues uh, from ESF and the department. And um, we are concluding now. Um, I, I'm very hopeful of the journey we, we, we are launched into. And I hope in the fall next year that, that I would be able to give you a very nice uh, view of results we've, we've, we've created, but also um, I think, Ali, well, I'm, I'm definitely, uh, hopeful that the, the story will not end in December 2020, but that we uh, that with this and the insights we get and, and, and what we learn here together, that we are able to make a, a very nice story uh, for the next several years in Flanders. OK, I wanted to conclude here, Elmar, um, and give some room for some questions. Thank you. Uh, maybe you can stop sharing your yes screen um there's already one question by tony uh what are the objectives of the hubs are there any well particular objectives yes definitely yeah. and it's what it was the four i i kind of mentioned uh um but in the we'll, we'll, we've we've really got objectives like we want you to go into the matchmaking and really um supporting uh connections but in the long term, it's actually creating jobs. Mm -hmm. um, that's the whole idea. It's about entrepreneurship. Eh? You want to have more, um, more assignments, more projects being, uh, being created. Uh, so the main objective is strengthening the entrepreneurship and the jobs in Flanders. Um, as we're not with a big big group, it's it's very well possible to to take the word if you want to pose a question. It's not really necessary to put it in the chat, um, but um, I don't think we're uh, well. It won't be too chaotic if we're <laughs> if we're speaking to each other. Uh, normally, um, just uh, unleash your microphone if you want. Um, no, thank you, Katrin. That that's very interesting. It's uh, at the start. Um, We've seen the social economy uh, being very interested in this this uh, circular economy field. They're actually naturally connected uh, to the circular economy by um, labor intensive work uh, that, they, that, that they've been doing already um, within, within recycling uh, companies as well. They are supporting recycling and, and sorting uh, activities in Flanders. And this, this way we can try to um, promote uh, their engagement more and and, and see uh, what they can do in a in a regional setting great um and so so are the subsidies mainly for uh, man hours and and uh, knowledge and uh, business model development or are they also on uh, physical investments um no. we've chosen for the first uh, uh subsidy like the, for the the, the labor cost um, and not not the investments, no, no. Okay. Um, and but uh, yeah, I think it's it's the difference. We did not focus on really physical hubs that we wanted to fund the location or or mm -hmm. or going as far uh, as far as um, subsidizing of new machinery and 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 production systems. 
in this phase, we, 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 we wanted to focus on the, the exchange of knowledge and insight and, and support. Um, We'll uh, hear about uh, the the hub in, in Flemish Brabant, the province of Flemish Brabant, in a, in a, uh, within 20 minutes. First, I'll give the floor to uh, Tony Schoen, um, and um, he's going to talk about um, something that has a, 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 some similarities with with these hubs in, in Flanders, but uh, he'll explain more about it and uh, and explain what what's happening there in Utrecht. I'm very glad to to have him uh, on board. Um, I will. Uh, Tony, you can start sharing your screen and I will just introduce you. Um, Tony Schoen is a project leader at Utrecht Sustainability Institute since 2017. He has acted as a coordinator of the redevelopment of Werkspoor Quartier. Uh, Tony has long-standing experience in research, development and demonstration projects in the field of renewable energy and circular materials. Um, and the Utrecht Sustainability Institute works on, of course, sustainability, knowledge, innovation, impact, uh, starting from the Utrecht region. Please, um, Tony, go ahead. Well, thank you very much, Elmer, for this uh, introduction. I'm very happy to be in this meeting and sharing some details of a Werksvork with, uh, with people from Flanders or maybe other European regions. Um, I also feel uh, I want to be a bit uh, modest here. Uh, Werksvorkwartier is certainly an, an attempt to be uh, active in the field of circular hubs, but by no means this is, a, I think, a, a finished story. And we need we just started with a lot of things we, we needed to learn on, on, on the way as the project was developed. Uh, but maybe it could give us some, some ideas. Uh, Werksvorkwartier is a business area, an industrial area in the city of Utrecht, which, have be, which has been developed under the, uh, the, the, the words of creative and circular and manufacturing. Uh, and I'm the project coordinator of the project, which we have been doing since 2017. Well, it used to be a steel factory. It was a large railroad steel factory, which had locations in Amsterdam and in, uh, in Utrecht. And they build trains, they build bridges, they build other industrial uh, steel works. Um, and they worked, they started late 19th century and around the 70s of the last century, 1970, uh, the, the uh, factory was, was abandoned because it was not uh, uh, cost effective anymore, of course. And there was a lot of competition from Eastern European countries in that time. So the factory closed down. And in the 1970s, a lot of business came here, in particular, a lot of community business, such as the, the, the housing agency of the city, the, the energy agency of the city, the fire department, the police department, etc. And they all came to this area in around 1970. And then 20 years later, a lot of them left again. Some of them uh, did not uh, exist anymore, such as the, the, the city energy agency, which was turned into a, non, a regular larger energy company. So they left and the, the site was rather abandoned. So in this night, in the, around 2015, a collective of, uh, of companies started to think about a project to, to redevelop the whole area as, as a circular hub. Uh, and who are those parties? Well, in the top, you can see three companies which were already in the in the area, which is the Werksvork Cathedral, which was uh, the owner of one of, or two of the larger uh, empty factory halls. Uh, the Hof van Cartesius, this was a group of three women who wanted, wanted, to, develop, wanted to develop a cooperative place to work uh, with, with a community uh, garden on the inside. And the Plaatsmarkers was also one of the three, uh, which is a, a company which take care of, of spaces for, for artists and rents out uh, creative spaces for them. Um, we had three circular companies who wanted to join as well, which is Buurman, which is a, a circular co a company working on uh, building materials, secondhand building materials, used building materials, and bring, bringing them back to the, to the community. We had Boat, which is an, uh, a, a consultant on renewable and circular economy, and the Utrecht Sustainability Institute, where I work, which acts as a coordinator. And what is interesting to see is that we also had three knowledge partners in the consortium, the university, the Hoogschool, 
and the, the Hogeschool of Utrecht, uh, the, the Arts Academy. Uh, and this was a very uh, uh, interesting link because this make, made it possible to, uh, to connect the redevelopment or the, the creation of the circular hub and link this really to, uh, to innovation uh, and to new forms of working uh, and also to students uh, who brought a lot of interesting ideas to the area and, who, and who, who could also take care of all of the, the monitoring of the progress which we made. So what did we do? Well, we worked on the Hof van Cartesius, one of the partners, which realized uh, a, a, a very spacious, a very uh, a friendly working space for cooperatives, for small businesses, a lot of them working with, uh, with circular materials, uh, a lot of, uh, let's say, Ambachten, uh, traditional manufacturing of goods and services with, with beautiful gardens where, where people could connect to each other, uh, which also did a lot of social uh, uh, activities with, uh, with uh, the people who lived around Werksbrokkertier. And we did the Haveloads, which was done by the Plaatsmaker, which is a, a building for, uh, uh, for artists, as I already said, for creative people and artists. And they house about 60 ateliers for different artists, and which was made out of existing buildings and used building materials again. As you can see, circularity was very much in, in, neighbor, in, in Werksbrokkertier, connected to the buildings, to the built environment, and also to the social con component of creativity, of uh, circular materials as a company, uh, and working together. We opened a, a Buurman Utrecht, which is a, essentially a second-hand building material shop, where you can buy a used wood, used other materials. There's a workshop where you can, you can work yourself. They have workshops. They have other uh, uh, activities for the, for the neighborhood. And they work together. With, uh, with the Afvalscheiding station, uh, the waste collection point, which is also in Werksprokertier itself. So a lot of people in Utrecht bring their waste materials to this collection point. Most of it is discarded, but now uh, the wood and other building materials are taken apart and being reused through this, or brought back to the society through this uh, Buurman Utrecht concept. And we rebuilt uh, the Werksprokertier, which also was an empty uh, hall from the old Werksprokertier factory, and here we created a uh, uh, space for uh, also, again, companies related to manufacturing, to mark, to mark industry, also very modern mark industry, such as 3D printing. Uh, and interesting to see here was that we also worked on a, a building interiors uh, technology using only wood to create inside structures inside the building itself. So this is a, uh, it's a re replaceable, um, easy to disconnect uh, concept of, of creating uh, spaces inside this, uh, this old factory hall with very modern uh, circular material of wood, which can be taken out, which can be re, uh, redesigned, rescaped, uh, uh, depending on the size or the number of uh, ateliers you would need in the building. And what was interesting to see is that after we did this, uh, a developer of, of, of another project in Werksprokertier, who was no member of the circular uh, consortium, they decided to create their own office building, also made of, of, of wood, which is now considered to be a very circular building material in the Netherlands. Um, so we were very happy to see that, that other companies outside the own consortium also started working in the export here. Well, what were the results? Well, before I go into the more practical results, uh, you, you, you could ask, of course, uh, how, do you, how did you define circularity? Well, we started in 2016 and we didn't define circularity uh, very specific yet. Uh, the, the, the idea was also to use this project to develop uh, assessment models and to think about circularity. So we, we used the, the generic uh, 10R principle of refuse until recycling, which, which I think will be used in many European countries as well. And we said, well, we, have, we want to aim as high as possible on this R list. And we also use a set of seven circularity principles, which were developed by Metabolic, who is no partner in the, in the project, but we have very good relationship with them. And they developed this over the last few years, the seven aspects of circular area development. I don't have a slide of them, but I would encourage you to look at their own, at, the, at those seven aspects, which give a very good uh, integrated vision on circularity, including energy, water materials, but also the social context context, of course, of working together and providing jobs. And the jobs were important for us. Uh, we had two uh, performance indicators at the beginning of the project, which were jobs 
and also working space, which should be realized in the project. And as you can see, we started with some, well, uh, 2,700 jobs in 2012, which was uh, calculated by the city of Utrecht themselves, which was increased to uh, almost 4,000 jobs uh, now at this moment. And you can also see that we, we moved away from the old classic uh, en uh, job sector as energy and industrial uh, developments, which were very present in 2012. And a lot of buildings were empty in that time, I must say. And now we added to this almost 50% of the jobs are now uh, connected to the creative industry, creative services, but also commercial services. It's also the, the area is now turning into a very vibrant area with a cafe, a restaurant will be open to, uh, next year. Uh, there is the Werksport Cathedral, which is a large hall for events. Uh, so we also connected it to uh, to leisure and inviting people to come over here so that, so that it will not be a classic a classical business area, which is very busy in the day and empty at the night. No, this is a, a, an, an area where you can come to work, but also for entertainment, uh, for education, uh, through all the, the, the university and high school activities. So it's a very connected area all in all. And we, we managed to realize some 15,000 square meters of workspace in the last few years, uh, four years. And it's interesting to see that this is doubled by other, part, other companies who also came to the Expo Quartier. So in fact, the project worked as a catalyst to attract awareness to the area. Uh, and a lot of other companies came here and they also start working with circularity principles, such as making buildings from wood and not from concrete anymore. But also looking on the services, the, the type of work that they are creating, which has very much to do with the circular econ economy as well. Uh, so this was the results. We have challenges, of course. We're not there yet. You see, it's very difficult to, to, to move from the classical zoning plans from a, from a city who says here there must be work and there there must be entertainment. But now we needed an integrated approach, tailor-made solutions, uh, and we want to have integrated solutions, which is not easy to discuss with a city who is very much organized in sectoral organizations. You have the energy department, you have the buildings department, you have the planning department. But to have an integrated approach is sometimes very difficult for the municipality. We also see that in Utrecht, there's a very high increasing demand on housing, not in Werksport itself, but in the surrounding areas, which gives us a lot of people who want to come here uh, for, for work and also for entertainment. But it also puts some pressure on uh, traffic, for instance, on accessibility. Uh, parking begins, begins to, uh, to, to become a problem also in Werksport uh, And we want to scale up our ambitions. We have been working on buildings in particular, but we really want to move to uh, the area level, shared mobility concepts, uh, greening the area, uh, and, and also waste flows where, where, people, where companies can use their, the materials from other companies to make their own products uh, and to have a really uh, area approach here. Uh, the city is developing a new area vision for Werksport Quartier. Uh, this establishes our status as an industrial district, so it will not be turned into a housing area although it's uh, inside the city of Utrecht. But uh, in the area of vision, uh, the people in Wax for Quartier want, want to develop a public-private area organization which can, add, which can add as the, let's say, the operator of Wax for Quartier on the area level and organize all the activities there and make sure that all companies who work here are included uh, in the development of the area. So we want to transfer the yields of our projects, which was financed by the European uh, Regional Development Fund. We want to transfer them to this new area organization, which I think will, will be very vital for the, for the area. So in summary, what did we learn in Werks for Quartier? I think it was very important that we invited the companies from the very beginning, the three companies who, who started the, the project, uh, and we asked them to create a joint approach, a joint ob objective, not a very difficult objective, but an approach which they could use in three to five years to develop their companies. And when we had them together, um, we well, we also looked at where is the energy and where are the initiatives in the area? So we didn't want to connect all the companies. We, we looked for the three companies who were the most uh, vibrant and had the most energy to start with this. And we converted a very easy ambition for the project, which in our case was to become a creative circular manufacturing area for the city of Utrecht. And then we created a multi-year project. This is not something which you can do in one year. 
we use five years, which are uh, which I think is very is, is really uh, needed for this. And we also focused on working together and on knowledge transfer. We had the, the university and the schools of applied science in our consortium, which was very valuable to keep things going in Werks for Quartier. I think what was important to have a few short term results already in which we could show the impact that we could make and also inviting other companies in the area to join in the project. So we didn't wait too long for these very first uh, results to, uh, to emerge. And then we, of course, involved the existing entrepreneurs, the existing companies in the transformation, which is not always easy because companies, a lot of them have a, have a focus, uh, a logic focus on day to day operation, on surviving in COVID time or maybe coming back after COVID time. Uh, but we try to involve them uh, as, as um, let's say, uh, as easy as possible. Uh, that they can join in the project, can connect, can share their experiences and are also engaged to, uh, to, to join the, the story and the transformation towards the circular manufacturing area. The project will end end of this year and we hope that we will be able to transfer uh, the project organization to this area organization who will then take up the further uh, well development, but also maybe uh, just maintain maintenance of the area as a, as a circular hub. Uh, so this is the, uh, the the summary I would like to present to you. Thank you very much. I look forward to hearing more of the, the 12 selected projects in uh, in Flanders. And maybe once we could organize maybe a visit or an exchange of information with one or more of those of those circular hubs. Uh, for now, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Tony. That's been quite interesting and uh... Only in 20 minutes, you managed to give us a, a well an overview <laughs> with the most important um, lessons. Very interesting. Um, Katrin, you have a question. Um, I will I will phrase it for you. Can you yeah. say something more about the first short-term iconic results? Well, it started with the Hofmann Cartesius, mm -hmm. which in one year created a, a, a working space of about a thousand square meters. Uh, and even the garden was very valuable because it was one of the green spots in the area. So it attracted a lot of awareness. Uh, visitors came there, just also uh, passers-by. It, 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 it is not really a public space, but a lot of people came by and said, can I sit here? Can you serve me a coffee? Which was not possible because there's no, it's, it's no horeca there. It's not, it's not a, a cafe. It's a, it's, it's, it's a working place. But it attracted a lot of awareness and it also created a very good place where people from the surrounding uh, uh, let's say the surrounding uh, uh, districts, neighborhoods could come for, for events, for uh, for small activities, which they exchanged. They, they did a, a closed exchange for the people. They organized affairs. Uh, now they are working on, uh, uh, you can buy your plants there, uh, which, they are, which they are growing in the garden themselves. So they organized very small activities together with people from the neighborhoods. Which also attracted a lot of awareness to the Expo Quartier. Uh, but a lot of also because we had it already after one year, we could also use it as a hub for presentations, for workshops, uh, which which gave a very good starting point for the for the further development of the area. And then one year later, we realized the Expo uh, Fabrique, which is uh, which is a let's say is really working space, maybe a little bit more expensive than uh, than the Hofmann Cartesius. But it also gave a good opportunity for a little bit larger companies and companies who are in the next phase to grow to come to work for Petir as well. And I think those two steps are very important for the success of the project. Thanks. Uh, Pierre? Yes, uh, I have seen uh, in your graph a uh, rather um, uh, nice uh, growing uh, creative uh, sector. Uh, do you can give a little bit more uh, details about the sector, what companies, uh, what is uh, their growth perspective and in which way they work together uh, in on the, the site? And are they all new companies or are it mostly delocalized uh, companies from one part of Utrecht to uh, the uh, Wexburg quartier? Uh, well, it's a mix, of course. Uh, the Platzmarker, which I mentioned, they have about 80 ateliers mm -hmm. for, for more for artists. Uh, and, but they are, they are, are also, of course, entrepreneurs because they want to live from their art. So they make art and they sell it. Uh, all types of art. 
but we also have creative agencies, we have uh, designers, uh, we, ha we have people who, who, who make, uh, well, uh, let's say uh, uh, um, furniture refurbishment, uh, clothes refurbishment is there. Um, there's a lot of people who work with wood, who make uh, furniture from it. Uh, so it's a mix of different companies. And a large, uh, let's say, I think 50% will be new. Mm -hmm. Alumni from the from the School of Arts uh, come to the Expo Quartier, uh, and other, the others are are smaller. But you see that some of them grow and then they move from, let's say, the Hofer Cartesius, they move to the Expo Fabrique where they can have a larger area. And one of the leading suppliers of materials for uh, for it, for interiors uh, in the Netherlands now has has, has come to the Expo Quartier to the fact to the Expo Fabrique. And they have uh, maybe in, in Utrecht themselves, they have maybe 30 to 50 people working for them and they supply materials for the creative and for furnitures, etc. Uh, so it's really a mix. It's a mix. Mm, nice. And just a quick word about the funding, Tony, because this is a project that has been funded by probably different entities, but also by the European Regional Development Fund. Um, yes, we have about 40% funding from the Regional Development Fund. Mm -hmm. that, that's on, in total. Uh, the, the, the knowledge institutes uh, have a higher percentage mm -hmm. and the, the companies invest for themselves have a lower percentage, which, which depends on the, uh, the, the Staatsteun uh, rules, uh, the state aid rules, of course. Uh, that, so that's 40%. Uh, and the rest is funded by the by the the, the knowledge institutes, the universities, or by the companies themselves. Mm -hmm. So in, in our project, well, the, the, that that is the let's say the European Research Development Fund project. But a lot of things are going outside this project, of course, with other funding as well. So mm -hmm. so in the exporteur, other activities are funded by the by the city, or or maybe by the province even. So it's really a mix. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, please, if, if there's someone else who would like to pose a question, um, go ahead. Otherwise, uh, you can do it in the chat or now, uh, <laughs> raising your hand. Uh, otherwise, we will move to uh, Mika and uh, Pierre, who are going to talk about smart loops. Um, one of the one of those twelve projects that received funding from Circular Flanders and the European Social Fund. Um, you can. Uh, share your screen, Miko or Pierre. I'm not sure whether uh, who's doing it. And um, just introduce you. Uh, Pierre Fasch is a. Um, I'm not sure. Pierre Fachier, no. Yes, it's with. Yeah. Uh, it's real angry. Yeah, yeah that's right. <laughs> now, <Okay>. not now. <laughs> uh, well, Pierre Fachier is innovation manager and manages and manages the smart hub cluster clean tech uh, for the province of uh, Flemish Brabant. And Mika Franz is a policy advisor and social economy. Uh, so please uh, share with us your experiences. Okay. Uh, good morning, uh, everybody. Um, I really uh, want to confirm uh, what Katrin just said, that the, the ESF call uh, Circular Works created a lot of enthusiasm. We really noticed it uh, too. We talked to almost uh, 60 organizations who wanted to cooperate with us, uh, and it resulted in the project Smart Loops, uh, which we will uh, present to you uh, in the coming uh, minutes. Uh, yes, the the main um, parts of the Smart Loops uh, project. Um, well, it's a ESF project, uh, which uh, which uh, Katrin um, uh, told you about. Uh, circularity works. Uh, it focuses on regional cooperation uh, between uh, three main parties: the social economy, the for-profit economy, and uh, government. Uh, and it's embedded in the regional climate action plan of the province uh, of Flemish Brabant. 
Uh, well, first, something about uh, social economy. Uh, it's uh, it's a collection of uh, organization who aims at uh, achieving uh, social goals by means of economic activity. So the the social goals um, uh, have the focus, and that's why uh, also what uh, Elmar and Katrien said. It's uh, nearly a match made in heaven uh, between the social economy and the circular economy, uh, just because of uh, these. Uh, societal goals. In our province, we have uh, 50 regional enterprises um, and the social economy employs approximately 6,000 people. They are um, active in a whole range of activities uh, like packaging, uh, assembling, food services, reuse, recycling, uh, green maintenance. And uh, they are supported by government uh, um, and it's like a compensation of the loss of efficiency of the, the workers uh, because uh, they have a, a great distance to the labor market as uh, we call that. Uh, what's our vision? Uh, smart loops want to boost uh, the circular economy in our province uh, by creating smart value change between uh, social economy and for-profit uh, companies. Yes, in our presentation we will get more attention about uh, knowledge sharing and communication cooperation in five uh, value chain groups, project design and planning. First, knowledge, knowledge sharing and communication. As you know, uh, in circularity, there is a lot to do. Uh, there is a lot happening, but often uh, they are, uh, the, the initiatives are lonely bottles in a large sea and don't reaching the seashore. Uh, so we, we, are, we will try to, to get all the, those initiatives in our region together and to get uh, in, non, uh, in, in knowing each other. First of all, we will do that with um, a social circular academy, uh, naturally also a website and a LinkedIn page and a communication plan. Our uh, circle, Social Circle Academy uh, plans a lot of events and workshops of which uh, a few uh, we present here, uh, the most important ones. Uh, in September we will organize a vis visionary seminar uh, about the future of circular economy in our region. Uh, we will have there a lot of nice speakers, but also a li uh, live interventions uh, of uh, several groups of people. Uh, so we will get no to know uh, what the circularity will be in five years in our region. So we have then uh, in fall also our pitch and match uh, session where we hope we can uh, live have live matching of actors and first step of projects um, then we will uh, go further with those projects with smart loops sessions uh, that are small interactive workshops uh, about co-creation, design thinking, user-centric design, business planning, environmental, social govern governance and so on. And afterwards we will have also uh, workshop together with governments about uh, circular government about purchases and new services and afterwards we will uh, close the project uh, who is funded but not close the the total project but because uh, we ha hope that it will last uh, far uh, behind uh, 2022 so we have a Smart Loops event, a yearly a community event with success stories, knowledge sharing and pitch and match. As you know, we uh, try to uh, promote the cooperation in five value chain groups and the value chain groups are the following. Green Loops, Make Loops, Food Loops, Smart Government and Circular Hubs. Green Loops is about green waste, green waste from public parks, nature reserves, gardens, and it's the natural uh, habitat from our social economy lead partner Pro Natura, and he 
that lead partner is working together with a so a waste service company ecoverf we have the aim that uh, we will use the green waste for new materials and you see uh, at uh, the bottom of the picture, uh, new office furniture, uh, even new office furniture in the new way of working uh, after COVID. Uh, and uh, they are made with several materials uh, made of yes, dried uh, green waste together with uh, binding agents uh, to have a certain new uh, products replacing normal wood. And also new biochemicals will be made in those uh, projects. Uh, for instance, new aromatics uh, products who are now made from, from uh, petroleum uh, and hopefully will be made of bio uh, of green waste materials. Our second uh, uh, working package is uh, the package uh, of make loops. Uh, they are looking at packaging, no waste events, uh, cork, D and assembling, uh, assistive technology and creativity. There our local partner is AMAP uh, and they are really keen on transition thinking, really transit, uh, uh, a transition to a new way of packaging, without, maybe without packaging, uh, another way of grouping uh, the products uh, for distribution, uh, working more on no waste events and they are now leading with uh, nice uh, systems for cups, but there are also other possibilities for cork. Uh, they are now uh, the leading company in Belgium uh, for the making of cork uh, products for insulation, but probably there are much more application uh, projects for cork. And a very important uh, way of uh, of way of working is assembling. Uh, often assembling is hard labor, but for people with a large distance to the labor market, it's uh, not so easy to, to assemble or deassemble in a nice way. But with assistive technology, we can reach the goal. And very inter uh, interesting is also the uh, way that creativity uh, can match with uh, those goals. So we have new services and new products. Our third uh, chain is food waste, food waste from the entire food chain. So from the farmer to the distribution, uh, we can have food waste and we can try to solve the problem of food waste. And there we have a social economy lead partner, Riso, uh, to, together with AT Food, who is uh, working on the food waste to new products and also to help prevention of food waste. We have digital uh, platforms, social redistribution, new recipes, new biochemicals and performance logistics, nice, uh, nice ways to, for instance, a, a better uh, conservation of products. Uh, uh, that's a very important thing for food. Then we have uh, the task we give to those three groups the, uh, those three chain groups we uh, we have in a chain group we have a lead partner we have already said Prodatura, AMAP and Riso but they work together with pioneers uh, Mieke has already mentioned the 60 interested uh, companies and uh, research institutes so they work together to have a roadmap design what's happening in our region what's the goal which steps we have to make to reach the goal and they will also look at the regional strengths and for, uh, in sp specific the co-creation between the social economy and the for-profit economy. Pioneer projects are a part of the roadmap and the pioneer projects uh, will uh, reach us, you can say, by attracting them or to, initi uh, to initiate new IDs. A uh, little preview of 
such a road map for green loops, but it's not uh, already in use, but uh, they, were, uh, they are working about, is uh, one about uh, collection. Uh, you have the different tracks. Uh, you have a track about collection. You have a track about processing, biochemistry, biochar, and materials. And you see already one possible project who will be put in place to have after a certain while to have the goal uh, green waste uh, as a gold mine optimal co-processing of several processes uh, maximum replacement by biochemicals of petrochemicals uh, maximum use of biochar maximum replacement of materials and our fourth uh, group is the government itself because the government itself is responsible for about 10 percent of all purchases in belgium so it's a real large impact buyer but we can make that large impact buyer a positive impact buyer by driver by driving the circular economy and we will lead as a province together with municipalities uh, this uh, group and we get we will get inspiration of the several partners and we will do some intervision. One of the main problems is the sustainable standards, uh, but also the total cost of ownership. Uh, you have to compare the several products, uh, the lin linear products and the circular product. And an um, important factor is the total cost of ownership, the, the cost uh, along the total lifetime of a product and that's not so easy to do so we have uh, have to learn a lot about it and we will have new circular products and new services i give back to mickey Okay, then the fifth uh, chamber is the circular hubs. Um, we noticed that, that uh, some of the social economy uh, enterprises we work with uh, were looking for uh, some additional working space. Um, and uh, so we thought, oh, why not create uh, some physical hubs uh, all over the province uh, of Flemish Brabant? Um, and then the 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 most acute um, need for space was in um, the area of Brussels, the north of Brussels, eh, where uh, um, amongst uh, Pronatura, but also Sonian Wood uh, Coop uh, and other social and circular uh, enterprises um, needed some space. Uh, so we are looking there now uh, to create a hub. Um, we had uh, already a very interesting uh, conversation with uh, Brooklyn, um, but uh, okay, we had 10 uh, social economy uh, enterprises uh, who were interested in uh, being located at Brooklyn, but now uh, Vilvoorde has objected, um, so we have to see what, uh, what is going to happen. But anyway, uh, all over the province, uh, we are looking for uh, having conversations with municipalities uh, to have these uh, local um, uh, physical hubs. Okay, then uh, tell uh, something more about project uh, design. Uh, what is the structure? We wanted to have a very uh, light structure. Um, and uh, at the top, you see the provincial coordination uh, that uh, would be Pierre and me uh, who coordinate uh, the project. Then we have a reflection group consisting of the different actors in the, um, the green loops, make loops, food loops, uh, the five chambers. Uh, then we have a consultant, Ecolife, uh, who assists uh, these chambers with putting uh, on the roadmaps uh, because, uh, okay, it's not, not that easy for a single organization uh, to put out roadmaps. Then uh, we have uh, VOCA who is participating, um, especially concerning the communication. And uh, we have Stichting Leuve Inc, uh, who is an association of uh, high technological uh, enterprises in Leuven, who uh, will uh, organize uh, 
the visionary seminary at the pitch and match and um, workshops like design thinking and uh, etc so the social or, uh, social and circular academy is one of the means but then we have also uh, a platform uh, which is called Dooners, um, and it's a digital uh, matchmaking tool between uh, social economy and for-profit economy uh, then we have a service point uh, okay and then the matchmaking tool and then we see the the five chambers uh, with the lead partners and then uh, the pioneers um, belonging to these chambers and then the planning, I think most of the things are already set, but we will work hard on roadmaps um, from now on uh, during uh, the summer. We have uh, our first uh, communication uh, about the matchmaking tool in June. Uh, it's the 4th of June. Then we have uh, the 20. 8th of September, I think it is, Pierre, uh, we have the visionary <laughs> seminar. Uh, then in October we will pitch and match. Um, and then we have the communication about the roadmaps. And uh, also interesting to know is that uh, uh, Pierre also manages um, a fund of subsidies uh, for innovation. And uh, the call is there on 15th of October. So we want to prepare the pioneer project uh, to apply in this uh, innovation call. Then uh, we have the, the workshops in uh, spring about co-creation and smart government. Um, and then we have our, uh, in autumn uh, 22, we have our annual event on circular economy and hopefully uh, a lot of um, uh, events after that. I think that's in a nutshell what we want to do in the coming years. Thank you very much, Mika and Pierre. Um, all these wonderful spirals here, <laughs> presentations, <laughs> spiraling upwards. <laughs> so that, that's that's a, a lot of expectations uh, for your project, and it's actually a project, and you expect a lot of different projects to to be developed actually mm -hmm. within mm -hmm. the bigger project. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, yeah. So it needs a lot of coordination. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's, it's also about the the question, but from Tony is what does your project offer to these three groups? Uh, the food food loops, make loops, and um, but you're actually doing the coordination and support of of uh, of their working of their uh, uh, different uh, projects. Mm -hmm. We have maybe I, I will mm -hmm. uh, explain. We have two main coordination levels, you can say. Yeah? The, 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 the main coordination uh, is in the province together with all the lead partners, but also the lead partners are coordinating their own chamber or their own group. So, and they are assisted by Ecolife. Mm? This Ecolife is helping them with the roadmap. Uh, design because it's 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 a rather difficult way of of of, of working. You have to to uh, to have not only a project ending at 2022. You have to see that it, it's a project will what will be uh, proceeded into the uh, into the, the the next years. So it, it's not ending on in in 2022. So a roadmap is very important to to focus. On a very, uh, a very late horizon, uh, uh, horizon third, uh, of, of 2000, uh, 2030, for instance, and how do you do you what, which steps do you have to take to reach the goal in 2030? So it's 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 uh, yes, uh, it's not easy, but the labor force is uh, helped. Uh, this, the the lead partners of every group gets some money for their uh, work, the labor. Uh, and also we have a sort of envelope. Uh, envelope is this, uh, a little bit of money that you, we have uh, put in place to help the projects 
to have uh, uh, all sorts of advice, uh, technical advice, uh, 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 advice about uh, uh, business planning and so on. So they have, when they have an application, they have uh, a good uh, setting of 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 uh, of, of uh, things uh, in, in place. So they have a larger uh, chance to have the application. Uh, uh, yes, they have a grant uh, in place of the application. So it's it's. We try to help the whole community with all sorts of uh, ways, but naturally the province and other partners are also putting money next to the, the money from, uh, of, of the European community. We have also money, as uh, Mika has told, uh, for innovation, for social innovation. We have all sorts of grants uh, we have to enhance the, the projects uh, to be uh, started in our province. So this will be money which you will spend on the projects inside the roadmap, which come yes. out of the roadmap. Okay. Yes, we have a focus now in those uh, grant uh, grants on circular economy and on those uh, projects who will be put it in place uh, from the roadmaps. And of course, we will watch out uh, for other uh, subsidies like European, federal, Flemish uh, subsidies. And uh, that's one of the tasks uh, of the coordination team is uh, to get this overview so that uh, the, the leading partners can apply to these different um, calls. Maybe there are some other Questions um, or ideas from uh, participants? Um, I was wondering, you know, thinking about what makes a hub a hub? That's, that's a very basic <laughs> question. But um, I've, I've, I didn't miss, well, I, I've, I've heard about the physical component as well. In, in Flemish Brabant, uh, there will be physical hubs that will materialize in a way the things that we think about and the thing that we want to do. Of course, these entities, these companies are already having a, a spot where they are, where they're working, um, but sometimes it's not always uh, that visible or it's not that well connected. And I think mm -hmm. a hub is defined by the, the matter of, of connections and of visibility, um, and that that can be um, that can be a, a trigger for for a bigger region. Um, to 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 participate and to um, to learn uh, from from the practice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, so, I, so. No. Go ahead. Are you looking for? Are, are you looking for? Let's say one one place where a few of those companies could work together, or yeah. multiple places. Well, we we hope multiple places, but uh, we start with <laughs> one, and we are very lucky to have the uh, the POM. It's the 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 Provincial Development Agency uh, working uh, with us. Uh, they have, um, for example, uh, uh, they develop brownfields in in um, several places in our province, and so that's uh, we we yeah cl work closely together with them uh, to have hopefully more than than one, um, and then. We, as the province, we wanted to to be the hub of the hubs, eh? because, uh, for instance, Leuven also has a um, also a sponsored hub by ESF, and so uh, yeah, we hope in the future to have different hubs uh, and that we can uh, link uh, between them. Mm -hmm. The hub, the hub question is also a very important one for the logistics eh? because mm -hmm. often. Yes, uh, reuse of materials or circularity, or put in, put in circularity into products is, is often uh, a little bit uh, a little bit um, in 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 uh, in danger by logistic costs. Uh, bringing mm. a product from one place to another is often very expensive. So when you have a place where several users of the same product chain are uh, together is it's often like we hope it's it's uh, less expensive and so it promotes the 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 putting putting in place of certain products uh, which normally not will be pr uh, pr pr uh, produced so it's 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 the hubs are bringing together 